What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I have a review of this beauty right here, which is the ASRock Intel Arc A770 8GB model. And this particular GPU comes with a lot of features that the reference model doesn't come with, and I have found to be quite uh, awesome, frankly. As far as the build quality and everything, this is the best build quality I've seen from an ASRock GPU ever so we're going to get into all of the hash rates right after a word from today's sponsor today's sponsor is coastal crypto coastal crypto can be found at coastalcryptomining.com via the affiliate link down in the description below they don't want to take up a lot of your time and neither do i because i want to get into the video they are here to help miners find parts if you're looking for asics or even gpus or any other parts be sure to check them out use promo code soat at checkout for five percent off any purchase on the website Welcome back everybody. So first let's go ahead and cover the specifications of this GPU. As you can see here, we are on a PCI Express 4.0 by 16. It does support DirectX 12 Ultimate and OpenGL 4.6. The memory here is cut down from the Intel Arc Limited Edition from 16 gigabytes to eight gigabytes and it does run at the slower speeds. So when we're talking about the memory clock, we're talking about 16 gigabits per second over a 256 bit bus, which means this is more in line with the Intel Arc A750 eight gigabyte model from a memory perspective than it is with the Intel Arc A770 Limited Edition, which has higher memory speeds, meaning we are looking at 512 gigabytes a second of total bandwidth. From there, we have three DisplayPort 2.0s and one display or one HDMI 2.1. It does support HDCP, MultiView 4, and the recommended power supply is 700 watts. You have two eight pin PCIe power adapters on this one, so no needed upgrades to any of the ATX 3.0 power supplies for this particular GPU, even though it is a newer release. Other than that, one of the best things about this GPU in particular that I found was not only the cooling, but also a switch that allows you to turn off the RGB, which is very, very nice for mining because if you're putting this in a mining rig, you probably aren't gonna wanna have the RGB going all the time. So you can click that switch over and it is a physical switch on the GPU itself and it will shut off all of the RGB. Now, talking about the cooler in particular, it is a three fan design, which means you do have multiple points of failure for fans. Sometimes for mining, two, two fans is a little bit better. If you're in a server case, blower models are awesome as well. There is an Intel Arc A770 version that does have a blower style cooler, so that may be something you want to look into. That being said, one of the great things about this GPU is it does have a metal backplate and they did install thermal pads between the backplate and the backside of the memory modules. So the memory is definitely a lot better cooled than some of the other models available. This is a premium cooler design, probably one of the more premium ones for the Intel series as it is so far. Getting into the hash rates, first coin we took a look at was the was Alephium. And the reason why we are actually utilizing in particular MMPOS here is we do get better hash rates across the board for the most part with MMPOS than in Windows. And we do have overclocking capability now within MMPOS for Intel GPUs. So if you want to get more information on that, please check out my video on how to utilize Intel GPUs in MMPOS. On Alephium, we got 1.72 giga hash a second, and that was at 214 watts on the wall. Now, there is a disclaimer here in general. When I was doing the testing on this particular test bench, the Intel GPUs were having issues with the risers. I don't have issues with the risers on the AMD B550 motherboard that we built the mining rig in, but I do have issues with the risers on this particular Z590 motherboard with the 11900K in it. So we tested via basically looking at the load prior to beginning mining and the load after 
mining and calculate it out from there. This means that it's a little bit less accurate than I typically have on this and I just wanted to make that clear up front. At idle, what we were seeing was 121 watts. So we just subtracted, of course, the total while mining from that 121. We also still have to take into account that it's a gold rated power supply, which is not going to be, you know, platinum and we're running on 110 instead of 220. So all of those things combined means there is more in the tank here as far as efficiency goes, but we still do have the numbers. Now on Alephium, like I said, we ended up with 214 watts once we did the math out. Taking a look at Dynex, we ended up with 1.61 kilohash a second. Now it was running at quite a bit lower than what was reported in the software. In the software, it showed 115 watts. However, at the wall, we were really looking at around 80 watts, which is quite interesting. And that trend did continue across the board really, except for the ones where we were allowing for basically max overclocks. For core intensive, algorithms overclocking was applied and what we ended up with was a core clock of 2200 pushing to 2400 did cause some thermal reports from the gpus however i couldn't tell you exactly at what point that was applied but in this particular case we did run into that issue taking a look at ergo we ended up with 123.85 mega hash a second at a very very impressive 76 watts at the wall and then taking a look at caspa we ended up with 419 mega hash a second once again clocked at 2200 megahertz on the core and this was sitting around 210 watts at the wall radiant is a similar story between 210 and 220 watts depending on when i took the picture of the kilowatt and it was sitting at 621 mega hash a second on Radian. Now, there is another miner called Nano Miner that does support Ethereum Classic as well as adding support for Kapow or ProgPal algorithms. Really just Kapow at this point and probably more ProgPal in the future. I'll be doing a separate video on that because it requires a different testing methodology and stay tuned for that. So there will be a follow-up video for both the Intel Arc A778 gigabyte as well as the Intel Arc A770 16 gigabyte models down the road for Ethereum or Ethereum Classic ET hash coins in particular, as well as for Kapow. That being said, with all of these numbers with SRB Miner, which does seem to support, of course, these the best, we do have them calculated out at hashrate.no. Remember, numbers are always fluctuating and what is showing profitable right now on the day of recording may not be what is profitable when you are watching this video, okay? But if we did take a look at that and calculate it out at 13 cents a kilowatt hour, Alephium comes out on top making 11 cents a day, while Dynex comes in second making 8 cents a day, and Ergo coming in third making 7 cents a day. We're at a loss on both Caspa and Radiant, where you end up seeing a loss of 36 cents a day on Caspa and a loss of 17 cents a day on Radiant. So really when we're talking about Intel, there's a couple points here that obviously stand out and that's going to be that the memory intensive algorithms are the ones that you're really aiming at with Intel. You're not aiming at, even with the top of the line model, core intensive algorithms, which means more than likely when we get into the testing for Ethereum as well as Kapow, what we'll probably see is a reduction on the Kapow side or less profitable on the Kapow side and more profitable on the Ethereum side. That being said, of course, with Ethereum, we do compete with ASICs, so it's probably not a coin that you want to mine. Personally, what I am mining with this particular GPU is Ergo. So while there is the potential for Alephium right now in the profitability charts to be profitable on Alephium, these GPUs are the best for Ergo right now as far as the Intel Arc series is concerned. And that means that you're at a competitive advantage 
on Ergo compared to all the other available GPUs out there for the price. Remember, this comes in at under $300 for 512 gigabits per second on the core, but I would recommend the Intel Arc A750 for mining over the Intel Arc A778 gigabyte model because you're getting the same memory, but then you're also getting a cheaper price around the 250 range and on sale all the way down to like $225. Whereas on sale for the Phantom Gaming here in particular, really you were only looking at like $250. So that's kind of where you run into some of the issues. Stay tuned because I do have a review for the Intel Arc A770 16 gigabyte and that throws obviously a wrench into the COGS as far as what ends up being more profitable at this top range of the Intel GPUs. Thanks for watching as always. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bells down below. And I will see you next Tuesday.